Well, hey friend, welcome back. In today's session, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how vitamin D impacts your immune system. I came across this really interesting paper. I'll share it with you right here on the screen here. The title of which is Vitamin D Regulation of Immune Function During COVID-19 by an author at UCSF known as Daniel Bickley. And this was a phenomenal paper because it helped to cement in my mind one of the mechanistic ways through which vitamin D is impacting uh, potentially the trajectory of this endemic and also impacting risk factors when it comes to more severe outcomes, complication, morbidity, mortality with viral infections. So uh, I, I wanted to share that with you because I think it's really important. We have a lot of people in our communities who are still really scared. I had a friend over the weekend tell me that their neighbor wears a face mask in their car because they believe that if people are crossing the crosswalk and if their car is close to them, a Viron can come out of their breath, go through the engine into their car and through the air filter into the interior compartment and, and infect them. So clearly people are still very scared. And I think it's just important that we share science-based information that can help people understand ways to improve their immunologic health and become more resilient and no longer be so scared and act irrationally and things of the sort. So we know vitamin D is very important because vitamin D stimulates a vitamin D receptor and various immune cells, including your upper airway epithelial tissue where viruses tend to infect, actually express vitamin D receptors and enzymes that convert your circulating vitamin D into the active form known as 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. And therefore, it impacts all sorts of different cells uh, throughout the body and therefore can reduce risk of various diseases. Uh, including but not limited to cancer, you have asthma, you have atopic conditions, you have COVID-19, you have tuberculosis, you have high blood pressure, you have type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, you have rickets, you have irritable bowel syndrome, you have osteoporosis, osteopenia. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so vitamin D is really important. But as I was mentioning, one of the ways and one of the things that I really learned from this paper that I'll just share with you on the screen is how vitamin D can restrain an overzealous, overactive, innate immune system. So let's just sort of pause and talk about what this is. We, we hear so much about antibodies in the media and T-cell immunity. Okay, so those are different facets of your adaptive immune system. Now, your adaptive immune system helps you get a leg up when you get re-exposed to a pathogen. Okay, so that's what makes sort of comprises and helps with, you've heard a lot about herd immunity and how can we slow down the spread? And how can we create more people who uh, will no longer transmit a pathogen, right? Well, innate immunity is a little bit different. There's no memory baked into innate immunity. It's either on or off. And innate immunity can be triggered and is often overactivated. And there's a smoldering background upregulation of innate immune cells and innate immune function that are characterizing the state of inflammation in conditions that are common, being overweight being sedentary, having high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, being diabetic, both type 1, mostly type 2, but but I think type 1 does have some, some underlying chronic innate immune system activation, but mostly, sorry, type 2. And also, uh, we know that, that just being overweight in general and sedentary, right? So, and eating processed food. I mean, various studies have shown that when individuals go to, say, McDonald's or, or have a you know, Egg McMuffin or something like that or, with orange juice, that there is this characteristic signature of the innate immune system being activated. And what I learned from this paper, it was just a good reminder, and I wanted to share this with you, is vitamin D helps to prevent overactivation of the innate immune system. Now you might say, well, how is this related to COVID-19 and this whole endemic and everything? Well, it turns out that part of the sequela, the disease pathophysiology that is characterizing or differentiating mild or moderate disease from the people that end up really sick and dying and having lingering issues is an overzealous, chronically overactivated innate immune system. And vitamin D helps to prevent the unrestrained overactivation of the innate immune system. So this, my friends, is really important just to understand. I mean, all of us are prone to having inflammation, especially as we age, as we get older, our baseline level of inflammation increases, our ability to regulate or tolerate our environment. That's why you know some kids can do well with milk and dairy and cheese. And when you're in your 20s, you can tolerate wine and beer. But as you get older, right, you're more sensitive to these things. You might have a glass of wine and then you can't sleep, or you might have a little bit of cheese and you get a headache, right? So this, this ability to tolerate inflammatory insults in the environment 
uh, is related to vitamin D, but also immune tolerance. But vitamin A, vitamin D play important roles here. And so uh, before we continue on, I just want to mention, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button, leave a comment below. That goes a long way. Also, if you want to share this with a friend or family member, please do so so that they get ac access to information. And I will link all the articles that we talk about. And of course, we can't talk about treating, curing, or preventing or diagnosing disease here, friends. But I do just want to mention our sister company over at Myoscience. We have a lot of different solutions that can support health. Okay, of course, we're not talking about treating disease, but it can support health. I will link uh, some some links below with coupon codes if you are so inclined. And I do recommend uh, pairing vitamin D with vitamin K2. Okay, so let's continue on. And before we finish up on that, I, I just wanted to share this paper that I also came across that I think is so important because, again, we have people, our neighbors, people in our community, parents of your child's kids are freaked out. They're double and triple masking. Uh, some people think because they have asthma or they have allergies that, therefore, they are at increased risk for severe complications. But this is important to recognize that just because you have a condition that might mean your immune system is a little skewed, it doesn't mean that you or a sitting duck and you're a goner, right? In fact, what this study sh found, asthma, atopy, so skin issues, psoriasis, rosacea, things like that, allergies, guess what? Those were actually protective factors for preventing severe COVID-19. Again, here's the article. Risk and protective factors for COVID-19, morbidity, severity, mortality. And so this was a study of multiple subjects, tens of thousands of subjects. Now, why would that be? How could asthma be protective? Because you people think asthma, I'm a goner. Well, it has to do with the innate immune system. So because people can have aberrations in their adaptive immune system, it doesn't mean, because part of the sequela, again, with COVID, is it imbalanced innate immune, the inability to turn the innate immune system off. That's part of the problem. So if you have imbalances, and let me show you some cells here. Here's some pictures of some cells. So if you have a condition, what we have going on here is we have up above us, we have various aspects of our innate immune system. Uh, you know, you have your mac macrophages uh, and, and various innate immune system cells, some of which aren't, aren't featured here. But the macrophage is sort of the prototypical innate immune system cell. It can become overzealous, overactive, and release interleukins and, and uh, you know, various inflammatory cytokines and so forth. But below here are your T cells and your adaptive immune cells, um, your B cells. Uh, your T lymphocytes, your T regulatory cells. So various people that have immune-mediated conditions, they have imbalances in their adaptive immune system, not necessarily their innate immune system. Okay, so that's important. As we go and talk further about vitamin D, vitamin D can help create some sort of balance in, in the both the innate and the adaptive immune system and help to prevent an overzealous innate immune system response, which it turns out is very important with regards to this particular pathogen. Okay, so uh, the paper goes on to say, and we're going to talk deeper into this, so the, what the author says here is uh, various other viruses, this hasn't yet been totally flushed out for, for SARS-CoV-2, uh, various other viruses and respiratory pathogens lead to activation of the innate immunity leading to increased local 125-dihydroxyvitamin D production and that has been shown to enhance viral neutralization and clearance in the upper airway my, while modulating subsequent pro-inflammatory responses. That's really important. I'm going to say that one more time. While modulating downstream pro-inflammatory responses, remember, this unrestrained inflammation is the problem with this particular pathogen. And, and so this is how vitamin D fits into this picture. Okay, this is the point of the video where you want to start paying attention if you haven't yet been. So it's very important. Importantly, vitamin D administration in humans, uh, particularly in tuberculosis, and that was from this paper right here, uh, where I shared with you that image uh, of the innate immune system and the adaptive immune cells. The, art the article says, uh, vitamin D administration in humans with tuberculosis patients resulted in a rapid drop in inflammatory cytokine and chemokine generation during antibiotic treatment, suggesting vitamin D mediated resolution effects on hazardous inflammation. So that's what we're talking about here. Preventing unrestrained chronic inflammation. Right? I'm going to say it again because I like to be annoying like that so it sinks in for you. Obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, being sedentary, eating processed foods. 
those rev up your innate immune system. Then you bake in a pathogen that that causes an overzealous in some people, an overzealous response of the innate immune system, and you have a problem. And that's why the United States of America is leading the world in hospitalizations, deaths, and everything, right? Part of the reason. Uh, also Mexico and, and these countries that, that eat our, the food that we make, the crappy food that we produce for the rest of the world, okay? So here's a, a more direct quotes. Vitamin D insufficiency has been linked to increased risk of respiratory tract uh, infections, including SARS-CoV-2, in a large number of association studies, whereas vitamin D supplement, supplementation appears to be protective, especially 